Now, I did my unboxing of the Surface Laptop 5 a few days ago. If you didn't see it, I'll leave a link in the description below. And needless to say, I was a little bit underwhelmed in terms of what they call an upgrade or refresh this year here for 2022. Uh, I really think they could have done more and we'll get into it in this video. It's not a bad laptop. If you like the laptop 4, you're going to like this. You get a new color, you get 12th gen Intel processors. You don't get an AMD variant this time around. And we're going to get into the metrics. We're going to get into the performance, battery life, everything we normally do. But is this really the laptop 5 or is this the laptop 4A? We're going to find out. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is my review of the Surface Laptop 5 all new for 2022, coming up. Today's video is brought to you by Best Buy, and I teamed up with Best Buy to bring you some of the really great deals they have right now over at their website. The Lenovo Yoga 7i 14-inch, I looked at the 16-inch version of this, but this 2-in-1 convertible is excellent with a 2.2K display, touch display built on the Intel Evo platform. That goes for $699.99. That's $300 off the initial asking price. You got the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360, which I reviewed. That's down to $1,000. That was originally $1,500. That's really good, $999.99. The HP Spectre X360 2-in-1 one convertible laptop a 13 inch laptop with a 3k 2k display i reviewed this one one of my favorites it's down 400 dollars to 1349.99 these are some great deals ladies and gentlemen and if you're looking for a microsoft surface laptop why not look at the surface laptop 4 i reviewed it last year it's down to 799.99 it was originally 900 dollars. that's a great deal and when you see this review this is the one you may want to go with again links for all these top deals in the link below and i want to thank best buy for sponsoring today's video now before we get to the unit itself i just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure i'm not being paid by microsoft i'm not being sponsored by microsoft all the opinions you're about to hear are my own Microsoft is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from Microsoft. Now, I already did an unboxing of this laptop, so if you didn't see it, I'll leave a link in the description below. But my overall takeaway is the build quality is excellent. This is an all-metal design. It's a premium design. We have a new color here. It's called Sage Green, and I really like it. It's almost like a greenish, grayish color. It's actually really nice, very classy looking. The engineering in terms of the hinges are excellent on this. This is a very premium all-metal build, like I said, and there is no doubt about it. This is a first-rate build from Microsoft. I like what they did here. So they're going along the lines of what they've been doing on this Surface line. This is no exception. Now, this is a thin and light laptop. It's easy to throw in your bag and take with you on the go. I like that. Okay, let's check out the port selection. On the left side is a USB-A port. Next to that is a USB Type-C port. And for the first time on a Surface Laptop device, it's a Thunderbolt port. It's a Thunderbolt 4 port that gives you full functionality, supporting data charge and display out. So it's good to see that. Moving over to the right side, there are no ports other than the Surface Connect port. And again, you can still charge on that USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port. Now, the big missing port for me, there's no SD card reader. Would have been nice on this 13.5-inch laptop. You don't get one. And for those of you wondering, yes, you can open up the lid with one finger. The engineering on these hinges are excellent. I love the way this feels. And once again, we get that excellent whisper quiet keyboard. One of my favorites out there. I really do like the keyboards on the laptop line from Microsoft here. And this is no exception. The good key travel, good tactility on it. And again, very quiet typing. So if you're in a meeting, you're not going to disturb any of your neighbors or anybody in that meeting because, again, it is a whisper quiet keyboard. That's really Really good. I like the nicely sized precision touchpad here. Very responsive when it comes to two finger scrolling, doing all the gestures. They work as advertised. Again, very nice touchpad here. It's a glass touchpad. I really do like it.
And as I mentioned in the unboxing video, theoretically, this has an upgradable SSD if you can get inside. Now, Microsoft says you should go to a Microsoft certified technician to get inside, and it uses that same small form factor SSD that you get on the Surface Pro 9 devices. So not easy to find, but if you can, it's a nice way to upgrade if you can get inside this laptop. There are videos out there on how to do it, but again, they say go to a Microsoft certified technician. Okay, now let's shift our focus to the display and pretty much the same display as last year. In fact, it has the same exact metrics as last year for the most part. Still a glossy display. It's 13.5 inches. It's an IPS display, a cool, they call pixel sense display, with a resolution of 2256 by 1504. And yes, that is 201 pixels per inch, and it has a 3 to 2 aspect ratio. Now, as you know, I do like the 3 to 2 aspect ratio, but you will get black bars on the top top and the bottom when consuming a lot of the media that of course has been made for a 16 to 9 display now the blacks are really good the white point is decent the contrast is pretty good and the delta e score is 1.57 so it's pretty color accurate and I would say decent coverage of the color gamut, not great. 93% sRGB, 69% Adobe RGB, 68% of the DCI-P3 wide color gamut, and 64% NTSC. So what does that mean if you are a content creator? There are better options out there for color grading, Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. Although not terrible, it's not the greatest thing either for the content creator. Just bear that in mind. But for most people, they're not going to care too much about that. It's really the content creators. It's a smaller segment. And this laptop is really not geared towards content creators for the most part. It's really geared towards the masses. So for the most people, you're going to be perfectly fine with this display. Now, I can't ignore what we all know and see here. And those are the large fat bezels once again. We were hoping here in 2022 that those bezels would be thinned out, give you a more sleek and modern look. We don't get that here for 2022. And as I showed in the unboxing video, this has a multi-touch display. Responsiveness was excellent, and it also has pen support. Here I'm using it with the Slim Pen 2. And although this is not a convertible laptop, it's a traditional clamshell design, it's still nice to be able to take notes here and there and to sketch out a diagram or some digital artwork when needed. So this is the front-facing camera on the Surface Laptop 5, brand new here for 2022. Unfortunately, they did not upgrade this camera. It's still 720p or HD, as opposed to what you get on the Surface Pro 9. That is a 1080p camera. You don't get it here. Kind of surprising and a little bit disappointing here in 2022, where a lot of these brands have moved to a 1080p camera. And Microsoft, which is a flagship device here, the Surface, let's be honest, flagship to lead the way to these OEMs that really they look to, uh, really should be having a, a much better camera here. And I'm really disappointed they didn't upgrade it here this year. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. It is an IR camera, so you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. Again, let me know about the video quality. Let me know about the audio in that comment section below. And here it is next to the Surface Laptop 4's camera. And as you can see, pretty much the same 720p resolution. A little bit disappointing this time around since we didn't get a bump up in terms of that resolution or quality. It, although it's not a bad 720p webcam, still here in 2022, it should be on par with others in this category. It's not that. And it still has the same 720p webcam as the Surface Laptop 3 shown here from a couple of years ago. And to prove my point, here it is next to the Surface Pro 9 with 5G. Now keep in mind, the Surface Pro 9 with 5G has a neural processing unit or an NPU helping out with certain things, certain features that it'll only have on that one that you don't get on the Intel variant. And I think it's better. Obviously, 1080p is going to be the big thing here. And of course, we don't get that with the Surface Laptop 5. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Okay, let's talk about performance, and this is running the Intel Core i5-1235U. That's a 10-core processor from Intel. That's eight efficiency cores and two performance cores. And when it's all said and done, it's an upgrade over the Laptop 4 from last year with the AMD Ryzen 5, although not a huge upgrade. We're just gonna see the biggest increase is going to be the multi-core performance. That's because it has more cores. And then, of course, when you compare it to some of the others in this thing and light category, it's not doing that 
that well. You can do everyday tasks such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing. It's fine. This is really not a gaming laptop. It only has integrated Iris XE graphics, so I'm not going to even bother on that. We've shown many times on this channel XE graphics with this chipset, so really not much of a gaming laptop. So look other places if you want to get gaming uh, performance. Now, as far as the Cinebench R23, which will count for any kind of thermal throttling, it does throttle down. Hence, you're not seeing the greatest multi-core, even single-core numbers on that Cinebench R23. Now, speaking of the thermals, when I ran the Prime 95 stress test to see if this will thermal throttle, it did power throttle to maintain lower clock speeds in order to reduce the temperatures. The good news is, of course, it never gets overly loud in terms of fan noise, never going above 34, 35 decibels, which is really quiet. And it never gets overly hot in terms of the surface temperatures with a few hot spots, as you see here and there. Now, as far as the battery is concerned, it's 47.4 watt hours, and it did 12 hours and 22 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. That's less than last year's laptop 4 running the AMD Ryzen 5 processor, so it's a little bit less battery life here year over year, and that's one of the reasons I'm a little bit disappointed in the sense that they don't offer the laptop 5 with an AMD processor, which is a much more efficient processor than Intel can offer. Now, the good news is it does charge pretty fast. About 90 minutes give you a full charge with the included power charger. Now, as far as the speakers are concerned, it's the same Omnisomic speakers that you found on the laptop 4, and I thought it filled up a room pretty nicely. Not bad for a 13.5-inch laptop. It's got pretty good volume, decent bass, and it also has pretty good mids. I would say a pretty good job, once again, on the audio. It's never been an issue on the laptop 4. It's not going to be an issue here either. Okay, folks, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the brand new Surface Laptop 5 here for 2022? I like the three to two pixel sense touch display. I like the elegant minimalist design once again. The new sage green color looks nice. We got improved CPU performance, especially multi-core, although now you're not getting it with an AMD processor, which is a little bit of a negative, of course. It now has Thunderbolt 4, which is great. You didn't have that before. Upgradable SSD, which is sort of, you need a Microsoft certified technician. Faster L LPDDR5X RAM this time around. Nice speakers here, whisper quiet keyboard. Those are the good things, but those are pretty much the same things you get on the Surface Laptop 4 for the most part. But it still has that same 720p webcam, although it's a good webcam for 720p. It's not 1080p. We need to see here in 2022. It gets less battery life than the AMD model from last year. There's no option for a higher refresh rate. You cannot go to 120 like you could on the Surface Pro 9. There's no webcam cam shutter so you can't get any security or privacy all out of that and there's no amd model this year as i mentioned which again is a big negative and there really is not much of an upgrade over the laptop 4 that's why i'm going to say if you want to get something like this i would look at the laptop 4 before the laptop 5 it's just not much of an upgrade this time around so what do you think about this bad boy, the Laptop 5, or what I like to call the Laptop 4A? So we got this sage green color. It's a greenish, uh, grayish color. It's really nice, a uh, very premium. I love the design of this. Let's get this straight. Pretty much the same design. So as far as what's new here, you get a new color. You get a new processor, 12th gen. You get Thunderbolt 4. That's about it. You don't really get anything other than that. You get the same 720p webcam. The same design, it doesn't really change, the same thick fat bezels, and of course there's no AMD variant this time around. And of course that's going to be interesting because this does less in terms of the battery life, it wasn't bad, it was actually pretty good for a 12th gen processor, but for an Intel processor, yeah, but for an AMD, not so much. You did about an hour more last year on that Ryzen 5 that I looked at. So. Not the best of upgrades here. It's a, If you want to call it an upgrade, it's kind of being generous. This is the Laptop 4A. There's no doubt about it. It has its audience, I'm sure. And if you already have the Laptop 4, I don't think you need to go to the Laptop 5. There really is not much here compelling to make you want to do that. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.